Welcome to Deep Talk, where we discuss issues that are not really spoken about in church. My name is Njabolo, and I would like to introduce our esteemed guest, Emmanuel. Emmanuel, if you introduce yourself to the viewers and what you do in the ministry. Oh, thank you, Jabulo. My name is Emmanuel Apiafi. Um, I'm an evangelist, so I run a ministry called The Nation's Call. Our primary vision is basically to reach out to the nations of the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, what we do is to um, try to explain the gospel in the simplest form to the lame man that he can understand that Jesus has come to give him the life. So we um, love to, we are privileged to be able to reach out to different nations like um, um, United States and India, the UAE, Nigeria, the Philippines as well. So it's been a big privilege uh, for God to have picked me to, to do this work. I think it's the greatest uh, thing I would ever do with my life. Wow. You know, thank you for the questions. Yeah. God has been using you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yes, you're yes, called out by his grace. Amen. Amen. By God's grace. Wow. Yes. That's thank you. Good. So, you know, you know, mm. uh, coming away coming away from that, mm. you know, um, I would like to ask a question um, also for the viewers mm. and also for those who are aspiring to be uh, preachers and leaders in the church. Mm. Um, my question to you is, what is the gospel? Mm. So when approaching someone um, concerning the good news, mm. what is the gospel? What do you say to that person mm. who needs to hear it? Mm. Go ahead. Mm. Yes, um, I would say the gospel is a very simple. Um, even the Bible talks about it being foolish to the unbeliever. So the gospel simply is, like you said, good news. It is the announcement to the world that man has hope to be restored back to God. Yeah. Now, you would ask me, why is man being restored back to God? Because Adam, in the beginning, in Genesis, um, had um, disobeyed God in, and um, he had fallen away from God. So now man needed restoration to be united again with God. So that was the sole purpose of the gospel. That's why Jesus came. Now, Jesus said um, in John chapter 10, verse 10, I'll read from the B part. He said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Now, that was the message of the gospel. That is the core of the gospel. The gospel is the news that Jesus has brought that eternal life to give to man now presently today that if you believe in Jesus that you would um, be one with God in Romans chapter 10 verse 9 and 10 it says the Bible says if you believe with your heart and confess with your mouth you shall be saved so that is actually the real message of the gospel that Jesus has brought the good news to man that hey there is hope uh, that you can be one with God. There is hope that um, uh, uh, you'll be delivered from the rot to come. Now, what is the rot? The rot means the judgment of God for those that are separated from God. Yeah. Uh, so the, the, the gospel is the good news that we have that hope again. Yeah. And today, that, that, that good news is available to everyone. Right. Right. Amen. Right. Yeah. That's, that's, that's great to hear. Um, so, so basically... Um, the, the, in what, you, what you're saying, what I get from what you're saying, and, and, and obviously um, you're telling the viewers, is that mm. the essence of the gospel yeah. is that Jesus came so that we can have life that's right. and have it more abundantly. That's right. So that's the es eternal life, as you had mentioned. Yeah. So which actually brings me to that scripture, which is in John 3.16. Yeah. So God, for God so loved the world... Yeah that he gave his only begotten son, right. that whosoever believeth mm -hmm. in him right. shall not perish but have everlasting life. Mm. So, I mean, how would you, uh, in, in terms of analysis, how would you actually uh, break that down? Yeah, that, that scripture, I think, um, you know, discloses the complete and uh, amazing heart of God. Right. That the Bible says he so loved the world. Right. He loved a hopeless world. He loved the world that hated him. He loved the world that didn't walk in his ways. So he didn't come to the world and condemn the world, but he gave up his son, Jesus Christ, for the world. So that's why when Jesus um, was hanging on the cross, he said to the Father, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. It was the expression of that love that was written in John 3, 16, where he says he so loved the world that he gave his son. He had given his son to the world, was given his son as a sacrifice in our place, in the place of the sinner that was meant to have judgment. That's why he says he so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes in his son should not perish. So his son came to perish on the behalf of whomsoever would believe. 
So that is the real message of the gospel, that whosoever will believe in the Son of God will no longer perish. But whoever chooses not to believe, they would have the punishment of perishing and, and going into damnation. And that is one of the things that amazes me about the gospel of Jesus Christ, that God would express his love in such a, a manner of giving up his own son. I mean, if you had a son, come think about it. Would you give up your son, Jabalon? No, what is <laughs> would, you, would you even give up your son for your own relatives? I don't no. think so, because no. he's your heritage. Of course. He would bear your name. He yeah. would continue your name. Of course. So you'll be thinking, oh, I'm, I'm meant to preserve him, to give him my inheritance, for him to continue my legacy. Exactly. But God himself says, no, I'm willing to give up my best for the world. So that tells me how valuable each life is. That tells me the value that God himself places on each person, each human being. How important God looks at man and woman and every human being and longs for them to be saved, to receive that gospel right. and come to be one with him. So yes. you said something interesting, yeah. which is um, judgment. Yes. You mentioned judgment when you, um, you spoke about not, not to perish, but you also mentioned the word judgment. Yeah. So... You're saying that when Jesus was on the cross, yeah. he took our judgment. Yeah. So es explain that in a more technical term, if you could, for the viewers to understand. Okay. Mm. I would like to give an example. Um, if you're on the second floor of a building and you decide to jump out, what would happen to you? What do you think will happen? Would you land on the ground and be fine? Or do you think there's going to be a reaction to what you've just done? I think there'll be consequences. You might That's break it. some bones or you know, you'll probably die in impact. <laughs> Thank you. God himself gave man a choice. And I think this is why I honor and respect God with my whole life. That God himself says, I give you the power to choose. I give you the power to will. So in Adam and Eve, in the Garden of Eden, had a part to choose. When they choose to disobey God, there was a consequence. And that is the genesis, the beginning of the whole problem of judgment. Because man fell. When man fell, the mean the falling he fell was um, he became separated from God. Because man was joined with God. If you read the story in Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2, the Bible did say that uh, God came in the cool of the evening and talked with man. God had a communion with man. So when man fell, uh, couldn't have that communion anymore, there became a judgment that awaited him because he had disobeyed the instructions God had given him. So because he disobeyed it, the consequences are already waiting. Do you see that? The consequences already were in existence. So that judgment was already there. So God didn't actually judge man when he fell, but yeah. God pre said to man, don't do eat this. If you eat it, right. there is a consequences for it. And I think that's the same message that we're bringing to the whole world, yeah. that God says there is a rot to come. Right. There is hell. Right. Now Jesus came to die to redeem man from that consequences, right. from seeing that condemnation or that judgment. Right. That's why Jesus came and took the sins of the world. The Bible says that he took the sins of the world upon himself on the cross. And that was the point where Jesus came to save the world. So he says, hey, you are no longer going to go to hell anymore. Right. I've gone to hell. I'm going to go to hell in your place right. so that you can now go to heaven right. to be with God. Okay. So that's uh, basically just um, how I can explain it in a few moments. Because the... I mean, I quoted um, mm -hmm. John three sixteen. Yes, but the seventeen says, "For God, for for He did not send His Son to judge the world, That's right. to, for that the world to condemn, but so that the world might be saved through That's Him." Right. So now, which brings me to the my second question, yeah. which is, what are the things not to say? Because mm -hmm. it said He didn't bring, He didn't send His Son. So that the world will be judged, but mm. so that through him that the world will be saved. Mm. So what are the things not to say? Because we, we have you have certain people who actually are preaching that you go to hellfire, they're mm. preaching they're preaching hell, they're preaching mm. lake of fire, mm. you know, mm. they mm. are um, it seems like they're preaching the terror of God yeah. instead of preaching the, the good gospel of God. Yeah. 
So, can you please shed light on that? So, you know. Yeah, um, just to also clarify that hell is real. Um, the fact that the good news of Jesus Christ is not um, uh, hell or warning people about hell. Hell does exist and hell is real. And if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, uh, it, it, there's a possibility that the person could be hell bound. So it is very important that we put into perspective, like you said in John chapter 3, verse 17, he didn't come to judge the world because right. the world didn't need judgment because the world was already in judgment. Right. The world was already condemned right. because Adam began the condemnation. So he came to so, save the world. So like, I know this is a topic that yes. I, I enjoy, but um, yeah. so basically, can you, because ex- obviously this is, this is a big deal, right? Yes, um, yes. Because what Adam did, uh, it, it, it caused the whole world to be in, the, in what we see today. Yes. Um, could you just briefly talk about mm. the technicalities of the, what Adam did, his actions, and mm. also go back into the redemption and salvation mm. about uh, concluding as in John uh, 3.17. Mm. So first of all, the... Uh, the consequences of what the technicalities of what Adam did. Mm. Um, if you could shed more light on that. Okay, so I, I would have to take you back to Genesis again. Mm-hmm. Now the Bible says that Adam and Eve in the garden, the serpent deceived Eve, and Eve did eat of the tree which God of which which is called the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So Adam, um, Eve did eat, being right. deceived by the devil, right. and um, you know she gave husband Adam. And he ate as well. And when Adam ate, man fell away from God. Now, why did he fall away from God was the question. That tree of knowledge of good and evil was to make man become aware of the sinful nature that already existed in the world. Because I will take you back again, just to explain this. In earth, the Bible says in Revelations that Satan was cast down to the world. Now, the question we, people often ask is, where was the serpent? Right. Where was Satan mm-hmm. before Adam and Eve were, came to be? Right. You see that? Mm-hmm. So the serpent was the one that deceived them. Right. How did he deceive them? Right. For, Adam, for the serpent to deceive them meant there was already evil in existence in the earth. So that was the origin of evil. Satan, of course, is the origin of evil and darkness. And he brought the judgment Mm -hmm. of God upon to the earth. Mm -hmm. So when Adam and Eve chose to um, obey uh, or fall to deception of Satan, the Bible did say in Matthew 4 that they came under the the leading of Satan. So Satan is deceptive. He's wicked. Mm -hmm. He's the one that is the origin of all the murders and evil in the world. It's all from Satan. It's not from God. So now to come to answer your question in clarity is that Adam and Eve fell under the rulership of the devil. Now man began to live by his senses, no longer as led by God. Because remember in that story, the Bible says that God came and spoke to Adam and Eve in the cool of the evening. So they have fellowship with God. Now, when Adam ate of this tree, Adam fell away. He couldn't longer fellowship with God anymore. So he began to live by his senses. So in regards to the gospel, so what are the not to say? Um, because you have preachers out there who seem like they're pushing people away based on what they say. I mean, it's not really the gospel. So what are the not to say in regards to the gospel? Yeah, I think one of the core things not to say is to try to preach the message of hell. The gospel is a message of the love of God. John three sixteen. God so, uh, God, so, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So the message of the gospel is the good news that God has brought life to man, not that they will go to hell. And I, I, we do know that today there are a lot of um, people who believe and mean well, but they go into all these different um, discriminations of even gender, they try to even try to talk down women from preaching the gospel because of the writings of Paul in 1 Corinthians. They begin to refer to women as not qualified to preach the gospel. Yeah. All that is not true. Yeah. That is just totally a lie from the devil. Yeah. Every single person 
The Bible says in, uh, in Acts chapter 2, when Peter began to talk about um, the coming of the Spirit, yeah. he referred to the prophecy of Joel. He says that I will pour my Spirit upon yes. our flesh, your sons and your, your daughters. daughters. Yeah. So yeah. he did specify yeah. that the two, the man and the woman, will be involved fully in the gospel. Right. So um, the, uh, one of the things I would specify again, the gospel is not a message of condemnation. Right. It's not a message of hate. Right. It is a message of love. God so loved the world. The message of the gospel must never shift from, shift from that. Yes, there is a judgment. But when you bring that message of love, it is that message of love and goodness that brings the transformation to the man that doesn't believe, to the one that doesn't believe. So when you bring that message of love and uh, of <clears throat> God's goodness to the world, right. the world will see the light of God right. and come back to him and leave the darkness. Right. So that is for me how I, I, I believe from scriptures is what the Lord calls the gospel to be. Right. Yeah. So if, um, just for someone out there, if you can yeah. just speak to the viewers, um, you know, someone who needs the gospel and they need to hear it. So if you could just... Uh, share the gospel with them right now. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so I, I know you must have heard so many things about Jesus, and uh, but I want to reintroduce him to you. Jesus Christ loves you so much. And Jesus is, um, he came to this world to die for you. And if you can accept him in your life, I know that some things may not make sense about him. You must have heard about so many things being said about this Jesus. But I want to give you a, a call that if you can believe in your heart that Jesus came to die, he doesn't need you to do anything. He doesn't need you to go kill a cow. He doesn't need to do any sacrifice. He just needs you to believe that if you can accept in your heart that he came to this world and he died and he resurrected and that he has given you life. If you can believe that, if you can take Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, that if you believe in your heart the Lord Jesus and confess with your mouth that he died and is resurrected, he says, the Bible says you will be saved. This is the message it's very simple. It may not sound like something you want to hear, but if you can choose to believe, this may be your only opportunity to know him and come alive in him. God bless you mm -hmm. as you believe. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Emmanuel, for your yeah. message today. Thank um, you so God much. Bless you. God bless you. God increase you. From Amen. grace to grace. Amen. Amen. Thanks for watching. Um, you've been watching Deep Talk. And for our next episode, it will be Can You Lose Your Salvation? Thank you. My name is Jabulok. Until next time.